really fast. All right, guys. Um, my name is Kai Singh, and I lead the Foolproof team in Singapore. So Foolproof is a UK-based um, experience design agency. And um, yeah, so we are not the guys who do the gadgets and the VR technology, the hardware, which is really cool. We are also not the people that do the content, like what the two guys were, uh, before me were talking about. But what we do is we get the content and we get the VR sets. And when it comes together in a magical experience, we are the conductors of the experience. So we make sure that it's a smooth, user-friendly process that people go through and they experience and it's something that's delightful for them to use. And that's where we come in. So in a way, we are yeah, conductors in a symphony. There's individual players uh, with their musical instruments, but we are the conductors. So we make sure that rather than noise, it's music that comes up. So that's an explanation of us. Um, so we're looking at, uh, well, just thinking about VR, we are really visitors and it's really interesting to see all the toys that are here. It's my first time in the VR. I don't think it's my last. Um, and I thought it'd be nice to think about the experiences or the projects that we have before and then sharing what we've learned from there. And we'll talk, we'll, I'm going to talk about three UX principles to consider when you're designing for VR. So I'm going to switch back outside. Right? Does that work? Right, so uh, just a little bit about Foolproof. So it's UK based with a um, uh, studio in Singapore and our work is used daily by millions of people. So we've been to London with, uh, and if you use the tube, um, you've already used some of the systems that we've designed. Uh, if you've booked something on like EasyJet or booked pizza on Domino's, that's something we've also designed. So we look at really big business, mission critical systems, and then designing so that they're really easy to use. Um, so just a little bit else, we are, the, I think, the largest in Europe. Um, and we are multi-sector, and, uh, and there's a lot of learning that we can draw from designing for multi-sectors, whether it's financial services, education, uh, fast-moving consumer goods, um, there is a small studio within our little studio called um, NIT and they are creative technology studio. So what they do is they take Internet of Things, uh, Conductive Ink, AR, VR, 360 video and they try and make really polished prototypes to sell into the senior stakeholders. Um, and we draw a lot of experience from that as well. Um, so we're going to talk about three things to consider when you are designing for smooth VR experiences. Usually when foolproof are brought in for something, uh, our clients would be, you know what, we've spent about 50 million on this new technology. Um, customers aren't picking it up, or they've picked it up but really quickly drop off and they aren't coming back. What do we do? Um, that's, that's, one of, that's usually some of, the, some of the issues that come to us when we help them with fixing that. Um, so yeah, three things to consider. The first thing really is uh, crafting the wow, right? So if you've got your first use of VR, you go wow, oh my god. Not just from a visual and visceral point of view, physically as well, uh, yes, you might get a bit nauseous, but yeah, if you're in a roller coaster experience, you really feel like you're moving, right? So that's really good, but what happens when we talk to real users of VR is, after about 60 to 90 seconds, they become, they go, okay, uh, the wow factor is gone, now what? It's a bit boring now. What's next? So it's not just the wow, but in a singlish term, then how? You know, then how? What's going to be next? And if you cannot deliver the then how, they are not going to come back. So people, uh, so I'm preaching to a converted audience. You guys know to, uh, VR is the future. But for the layman out there, walking along the street and you pull that off, they don't do VR because of VR. There has to be a need for it. Right? VR is just a medium. 
Like mobile is a medium, cinema is a medium, a book is a medium. Like, what's really driving behind that? That's really important. So that's something to think about. So one thing to really question yourself is how does your VR app, your content, your experience uh, really continue uh, to engage through touch points past that 60 to 90 second mark? So 60 to 90 seconds is important because you won't wow them. But yeah, think about what's next. Uh, so on my Facebook feed, uh, when Don invited me to talk, the next day this thing comes up. So I'm just going to read that to you, it's a bit small. Uh, so this guy called Michael Chen, my friend, uh, you know what will make me buy into VR, watching a soccer game, you know, uh, and feeling like you're seated right there with the fans. Maybe Maurizio talked a little bit about that. And yes, that is, seems to be a draw. draw. Um, whether they can last the entire match, with a heavy headset, it's a different thing. But at least, you know, they are willing to pay. But the question really is this. Um, VR has special affordances. It gives you perspective. <laughs> it changes your perspective, right? Now, instead of being in my room, I'm really in the, you know, the cop uh, with the fans. And that's really special. If you think about how many VIP boxes, so you think about uh, if you play tennis, Wimbledon, if you want to buy a ticket, you've got to go for a ballot, and if you're lucky, you get a ticket. If not, too bad, right? Sometimes you might fly there and you might want to ask people if they'll sell you a thousand pound ticket. But the scale of that experience is different. You can, you can sell as many VIP position viewings as you can now. In the physical space, 55,000 in a football match, that is, doesn't limit you anymore. And that's something really different with perspective. So just by putting you in a perspective. The other thing is, with the perspective, is control. I can now see where I want. Right? If you go to a 3D movie, like let's say Star Wars, Force Awakens, you are still viewing it from, a, from the director's point of view. Uh, and there's only one view for that. Right? So giving them control is something really interesting. And that's... I think something that directors haven't really figured out. We talked about whether they should be game designers or it's, it's tending towards game design. And I feel, yeah, if you're going to be a VR director, you got to know level design from game design principles. And that's something to think about as well. Uh, yeah. The second one is you have to offer an experience trailer. And what do I mean by that? Uh, we found that when people... When people um, did VR experiences, and we asked quite a few, half of them said, I didn't use a headset at first. So half of them would download the thing and then try it out on the mobile phone or on their desktop and use the trackpad or the mouse to drag around and see first before they find, is it worth me strapping this thing on? Think about this, half of the people try it without the headset. So what that means is, if you're designing for VR, the first few seconds have to be agnostic of whether you have a headset or not. If your experience breaks without the headset, then you're losing almost 50% of the people. So think about that. Yep. <coughs> and yeah, they test it out, which means they're trying to answer the question, is this worth my time to download and explore? You need to give the answer really fast. No App Store, Google Play, you've got previews, you've got movie, uh, you've got videos of how apps work. You need to provide that before they download the 500 megabyte app. You have to be able to do this. If not, that's not going to work. That's not going to get picked up. Uh, so you think, yeah, what kind of information can you provide to entice them just to download that thing? So right, think about that. So the third thing is, you have to reduce friction across the journey, and I don't mean the journey within the app itself. Um, how you find it on the store, how you download, what is the out-of-the-box experience, those are really big pain points. People want to get to the fun, but they don't want to go through hoops to get to the fun, and that's something you think about. And you can only really know whether there's friction by testing it out, by giving it to somebody 
not giving any instructions and letting them do that, right? Because the rest of the tech world doesn't give instructions. You don't get instructions on how to use the app unless you have onboarding. So there shouldn't be any instructions for setting up VR experiences. You, you have to think about that. It has to be super simple. So the more you minimize effort for the user, then the more you maximize conversion and how they would come onto the app, right? So you have to think about that. Um, yeah, you have to identify pain points in the entire journey, observe them doing it. Uh, there's many, many um, well-established ways, ISO standards for how to test with users. Um, and that's part of uh, experience design. So and that's, that's one of the things you have to think about. Um, and I want to share with you the last thing. So, so uh, when, when we, got, we got a really interesting project in the past, it was about FIFA. We weren't designing the game, uh, but what we learned was, as we were engaged in the project, the game designers spent a lot of time finessing the 3D models, the gameplay, how challenging the AI was, how realistic the players were running, but they, they forgot about the menu to get to the game or the match. So what happened was, you know what, it's really fun. But you have to go through five levels of the slow and clunky and laggy menu every time you play. And that was a really big pain point when they did QA testing. Because if you spend so much time on the actual experience, spend some representative time on the experience before and after as well, you have to think about the entire process. And that's what we talk about when we talk about reducing friction for the entire journey. You have to think about that. Um, if you really want a smooth and frictionless uh, process through that, okay? Um, yeah, so that's about it. Hopefully, short and snappy. So, wow, but the more important is then how. Then how is more important. Uh, think about experience trailers whenever you create content. And then, yeah, reduce friction across the journey. Test early, test often. Uh, you'll get there. That's it. Questions from the audience. Yep. Can you just describe what exactly you did for the tube or EasyJet? Oh. Okay. So, what example of what we did for the tube and EasyJet? Uh, so, maybe for the tube, uh, what we did was we designed a kiosk with the interface. Um, what we realized was people were making mistakes because of the vibrations in the station and they're pressing the wrong buttons and buying wrong tickets. That's really odd, right? Uh, but that's what happened. Uh, so what we did was we did usability testing, so we, we, dis we, we timed them, figure out how many number of errors they had, and then when we did a prototype, we did a pretend kiosk, and we got people to do that, and we measured how fast and how many errors they had as well, so that we knew our design was better. So those are some of the things that we, we talked about. So there was a lot of research, uh, ethnographic and usability testing, but there's also uh, interaction design, information architecture to you know figure out what menu systems uh, had and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but we, we could share a little bit more later. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm asking about the user experience uh, because I did some testing for VR. Oh. So actually, the first <laughs> reaction for you, you know, reticle. Um, no. Uh, basically, but, the, yeah. the 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 simple thing you see. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so the first, the first uh, reaction was they thought that to trigger whatever that is to, is by looking at that circle thing. So is there a better way, or is there a alternative uh, alternative to replace that circle circle? That's an interesting design form. Um, I don't really have an answer for you. Uh, but I think really whatever we develop as an industry, as the standard. So, okay, a lot of times we, we, we learn from past experience. So, when we had windows, we didn't really know what were files and folder systems, and delete was not a very known process. So some, one of the metaphors they used was a trash can then you threw stuff into the trash can. 
But that actually doesn't delete the file if you know what we are technical stuff, right? It doesn't actually delete the file. So metaphors help. So thinking about different metaphors from past experience that we already have would, would help with that. So example would be uh, the save button. Nobody uses the properties now, but we're still using it. And that's because it's learned behavior. So using learned behavior will be one way to think about it. And what, what essentially have we learned to say, let's focus our eyes here. Great. I think we're going to have to wrap it up. Can you grab a map? Thanks right. so much. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye. Thanks.